you know, Tupac kind of disband that Thug Life group. Can you talk a little bit about, for, for people that don't know, what really happened when it comes to people like Big Psych or Johnny J because they weren't around near the end of of Tupac's tenure at, at the label. Can you speak on those two? Yeah. So the Big Psych situation was, so that started in like February. Okay, now, I don't remember seeing Big Psych around I think the last time was the end of March when Big Psych uh, made his exit. Y'all gotta remember, man. Record business don't get, you don't get paid for 180 days, which is six months after something dropped. Big Psych was getting like $1,500, $2,000 a month from death row. Everybody always said, yeah, oh, sure didn't pay. <laughs> uh, Tupac didn't pay you. Sugar paid you. Yeah, yeah, you stupid motherfucker. That's how everybody got paid around Death Row. By, by Sugar Knight and Death Row. My Death Row accounts. But Big Psych and this dude named Bo, uh, uh, Bogart, they both were getting paid to, to, to hang with, you know, with Tupac by Death Row. So they were getting about, probably about 2000 a month or whatever. That's nothing. Nothing when you on an album and your woman hearing you, man, yeah, I got keys from overseas. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that sound good, baby. You playing that a hundred times a day. And I'm, you know, everybody talking about it, but we still over here living like we living. And you always gone and staying in the Peninsula Hotel and all that and eating good and coming home. Crystal on your breath and all that. But you ain't got no money in your pocket and you only bring in a check in for like $2,000. And it costs you that just to drive and, and to get to that nigga. <laughs> if you want to keep it real. Because he had to, you know, he was driving around, he was in charge of the blue suburban. All right. So you have this type of pressure at home, right? So Big Psych was having this pressure at home. So he was always coming to Park like, man, I need some money, you know, I need some money, I need a check. You know, got this song, it's doing well, like everybody thinks, how the business goes. Yeah, 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 I'm going to take care of you. I'm trying to get this situation set up, uh, you know, where I'm going to be getting this monthly and then I'm going to pay people you know, through euthanasia or Machiavelli Records and all that. And I want you signed to Machiavelli Records. You're going to be signed to Machiavelli Records. You know, because she's tired of all taking care of everybody that comes around. So he's trying to set up Snoop, Hammer, Pac, and, you know, eventually Death Row East with Eric B and all of them. And he's trying to get them to be self Independent, where they got enough coming in, where they can take care and sign and deal with all their own people. I'm telling y'all, that was the plan. Y'all can believe it. However y'all want. So, that was your big plan. Big sight, like, guess he's tired of asking Tupac. And he comes to Shug. Tell Shug, man, I want to sign directly to you. I, I need $50,000. I'll, I'll do a deal with you for $50,000. I'll sign with you right now. My publishing, my, you know, whatever. You know Shug. I don't know anything about Shug. I ain't learned anything about Shug from Reggie Wright. Shug have bitch tendencies. My nigga, but he plays niggas against niggas, homies against homies for a, for a hobby, <laughs> for fun, for, he loves that shit, divide and conquer bullshit. You know, man, you know, can I talk to you, me and you one-on-one? -on -one? Anyway, my nigga go back and tell 
Tupac. The conversation him and Big Psych have. Tupac take it as disrespectful. I'm pissed. Y'all show me a picture, tell me a record or anything that was recorded after March 31st of 1996 with Big Psych. So that's why Big Psych wasn't around. 